All right, everybody. Team Never Quit. Checking back online. I got one of my teammates here. I have a guy here who has probably one of the craziest stories I've ever heard of. No, it's probably the craziest story I've ever heard of, and we've been through a lot. So the good news is, is that he made it through all this, and he's come out to tell his story. He's actually writing a book about it. I've had a chance to get him on here. So I want everybody to go out and, and, and literally take the time to hear this guy's story. Before you read the book, we got the man himself out here. We're going to bring him on and let him tell you a bit about his background, where he's from. Mr. Mike Day, uh, brother, thank you so much for, for making it, by the way. Thank you for your service, and thank you for writing the book. I know a lot of people uh, know this story, but a lot more people need to hear it. So without further ado, man, it's time to introduce you to the world. Here I am. <laughs> You're kind of frozen right yeah, now. Yeah, in the flesh, man. All right, let's back it up just a little bit. Tell everybody your name and where you're from. Yeah, hey, my name is Mike Day. Uh, just released a book last month uh, called Perfectly Wounded on the 9th of last month. I was born in New Jersey. Uh, kind of lived a little bit around Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia Beach, and uh, I did 21 years in the SEAL teams. <laughs> you hear my cuckoo clocks? <laughs> and you're back in and you're back in Virginia right now, right? I am. I'm uh I'll probably be on the road next month. Um uh, you know, working on selling the book and uh doing some fundraisers. Um I've got an event this month with uh Black Rifle out in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um I hope Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you love those guys. They're awesome. Yeah, the network we have of all the guys you've gotten out, Army, Navy, across the board man and everybody going into kind of their their new fields and the new uh you know interest is taking off and black rivals one of them man them guys are black so they're gonna they'll, they'll help out a lot yeah they're hilarious really like what they've done yeah let's back it up a little bit man Talk about when uh how you got into the seal teams well for me it was kind of an accident um i um uh, I was I was the ringleader of all the kids that you don't want your par your your kids to hang out with, and I eventually got kicked out of high school. So I had to find something to do. Uh, I did go to the Job Corps in Baltimore, and I got a uh, my GED and a a license in carpentry. And I tried the college program; didn't last long. So I was in the Navy at 17 years old. Uh, originally tried to join the Marine Corps, and they were not accepting GEDs. Uh, which is incredible. I would only made it four years in the Marine Corps. You know that, Marcus. <laughs> I would hey, go to my four years. Uh, they they not live me in either. <laughs> I, I love those guys now. You know. Hey, man, that's why the team, that's why the SEAL teams were invented. <laughs> yeah, to, to 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 make people like us uh, not be bored. <laughs> yeah, give us something to do. I get bored easy. <laughs> But definitely kept what year did you go through buds? Um, I was in three different buds classes. I went, I started in buds class 166. I uh, went through Helic with them, got rolled, uh, wound up in class 168, and then I got rolled at a 168 graduation week. This that stuff's in the book. <laughs> I got rolled graduation week because of a personal indifference with an instructor. It wasn't because I was doing anything wrong. Yeah. Um, and then I graduated by class 160. Uh -huh. So I showed up at SEAL Team 3 in 1990. That was my first SEAL Team 3. Right. And then you transferred over to the, to the East Coast, right? I did. I spent uh, seven years at SEAL Team 3, and then I did three years at the Jump Team, and then I came, I came East, and I did uh, SEAL Team 8. Did a platoon uh, uh, deployment to Kosovo and wound up checking into a training command three days after 9-11. Nobody wanted to go to trade at. I was one of the original people to have to go to trade yeah. at because <laughs> uh, I had my LPO. Staff I remember there. that. I remember. Yeah, I, I, I remember where I was in 9-11. I was cutting my grass. I just checked into a new command that I didn't want to go to. I didn't want to leave a SEAL team. And uh, two, three days after checking yeah. into that command, 9-11 uh, happened. 
So it's uh, it, it was it was a great career. Without getting into too much detail about what, without getting into too much detail about the book, like the in depth parts of it, you and I actually were in Iraq together. It was a uh, when when you got busted up real bad. You, we were just separated actually, by the towns. I, I actually met that you. Down. I met you on your next return trip from the previous one when you got yeah. busted up. That's right. We. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. Shit, we got that night that I met you. We got ID twice that night. We got we got ID. Oh, and Felicia. just just again. Bill, yeah. What was that? I'll never, I'll never forget that, bro, because I had just gotten out of the hospital and then dropped right in. That's when we got when we linked up. And then when we got in to go to our to the separate towns, everybody started getting IED. Um that was the craziest thing. That was six, seven months later during that turnover up. So the premise behind the book is when you say perfectly wounded. I tell you what, that is a per that's a great title. Because it, it, in all the stories that I've heard, all the movies that I've watched about dudes getting shot up, and I'm talking about this day and age, like when you see a Terminator movie and the Terminator gets shot up 15, 20 times and keeps going. I, I've never heard any other story like yours. Morgan and I talk about it all the time, about what you went through. And, and uh, just keeping your personality and the, and the way you overcame a lot of that adversity, man, it, I'm glad you finally wrote it down. I'm glad you, you're going to put that out there to everybody because it, it, it is something, bro. Never forget that. What you went through, forget about three buds classes, which is amazing, by the way. Nice job, especially in the 160 version because that's like the Vietnam guys. They, they were mean to everybody. And well, we, we, we all – Going through all the deployments, all those IEDs. It's uh, – Go ahead. It's something that everybody wants to try to figure out is how to – build resiliency and it's uh it's a matter of training um, mine wasn't wasn't intentional i just grew up in a very harsh household um i got into seal teams the seal teams were i don't want to say easy but because my father was such an, a monster uh, i really wasn't bothered by the things i saw in the seal teams um i would i would say that my, my last three years of my life i've 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 had more stress uh, and more things, more things that like really ruin people's lives happen to me in the last three years, but I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I feel like I'm managing it well. Um, and, and, and this day and age too, everybody, I mean, yeah, I, it just I can shifts on us when we get out. Well, to, to me, the SEAL teams was a job. It wasn't my identity. It was it was just a job to me. Although although I loved doing it, it was just a job. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I kind of miss it. But I can I can go find the same things in the SEAL that I found had in the SEAL teams out here. I mean, I can go jump out of an airplane. I can go shoot. I can go do a lot of the things that the SEAL teams. Why I love the SEAL teams, and that was because it just kept me occupied. And it, and it challenged. Sure. Yeah, it gave us something to do. Well, it challenged me all the time. All right, bro. Hey, man, I got a, I got a bunch of questions from a bunch of people that, that I, I want to read off to you. And we'll, uh, we're going to jump into some of those. You cool with that? Yeah. And I've got all these, I've got all these placards or book things that I'm signing for everybody. And uh, I'm going to oh, get yeah. them. So everybody, when you get a chance, Perfectly Wounded is the name of Mike Day's book. I, I, I highly recommend it. This, I, I mean, I... I've been in the field with this guy. There's some of the guys out there that, wrote, that have written great books and have great stories. Uh, this guy's one of them. It's so unique that all of us in the SEAL teams talk about it. When you, when you say his name is synonymous with getting busted up worse than anybody, that's not a joke. <laughs> well, all right. I, I, First question. This is from Betty. More, She's from Oregon. I got shot more than anybody, but I know – I mean, I was a wounded warrior advocate for seven years, and I saw people a lot – a lot more hurt than I was. I just got so lucky. Um, I think appreciate you being humble on this one, brother, but I'm the one who's going to charge on this, so I'm telling you you're a badass and stick to it. All right. Now let me read you this question from Patty. 
Because <laughs> she's from Oregon. Who is she? <laughs> she? She's Betty. All right, Betty. And she's from Oregon. She heard you on the Lars Larson show. Okay. And she just wanted to, she wants to sign the book, okay, personally. I didn't read the whole question, but apparently she's a big fan and she's from Oregon. Let's go on to the next one. All right. Did you run an Iron Man? Oh, I only did a half. I did it. Chris Why Pratt. Did you do that? Chris, oh, I did a fundraiser for a brain injury center called oh. Carrot. Remember yeah, Carrot? Charity hurts. Yeah, Carrot's gone. Charity hurts, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, the uh, uh, I I did that half. All right. And, and I got invited to do a full in Hawaii, and I actually got pretty sick trying to train for it. I gave myself diabetes. <laughs> Half Iron Man ain't bad. A full Smart. Iron Man, a full Iron Man is yeah. taking the balls. Yeah, yeah, especially the one in Hawaii. We've been out there when they, when they were doing that one, and it's uh, that's gnarly. The, the, the full ones, the athletes that do those, the male and female man, those guys are above and beyond. All right, I still, I got a question I still for you. All right, let's go. <laughs> this is from Dan. He's from, he's in California. Mike, please tell me about any mental health exercises you use to get through recovery and to get through your injuries. Oh, uh, well, the way I see it, it's all training. If, if you're in a bad state, you allowed yourself and you trained yourself to get there. So if you can train yourself to get into a bad state, you can train yourself to get back. Uh, a lot of people think that they, they want the, the easy button and you want more of a continuation, uh, a continuum of care that you're always, that you're always analyzing and you're always watching yourself uh so that you go get the care uh, or or the treatment or i mean and, and treatment to me is, is is a run in the woods um so it's it's, it's a matter of taking care of yourself because nobody else is going to do it better than you are So thanks for the question. I, I agree wholeheartedly on that. Yeah, Dan, thank you for that question. I agree with that. I mean, the same things that got us motivated to get to the position to where we got hurt, that built up the stamina, mental and physical, always go back to that. And I mean, I would watch, the, everybody gets on to us about watching the same movies over and over again. Well, a lot of times that gives us our identity. I mean, I, I see things that fire me up. I'm going to keep watching it. Then it retrains my mind. And I stay around the people that, that built me up. I don't alienate myself from them. That's one of the big things that, that sometimes we do. I absolutely agree with that one. Well, the, I like to tell. All right, this one. I like to tell Kyle people I keep Kentucky. my demons close. I keep my demons close so I, so that I so I know they're there. I don't I don't dwell on it though. Well, yeah. No, you no. Can't, you can't get rid of them. Well, yeah. The, the only way you know you're having a good day is if you've had some hardens. <laughs> The only way you can have a good day is if you had some bad ones. All right. I don't know. <laughs> All right. This is uh, Kyle from Kentucky. What is the greatest lesson to teach young kids about regarding the military? Hmm. I would say the thing I probably say the most is the secret to everything is to relax. And, uh, if you can just relax and breathe, you're going to get through everything. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he's asking. The, the, the best thing to know about the military. Um, I, mean, I can say why I loved it. I, I worked with a bunch of people that, uh, that, that knew what their job was. They knew what the end state was, and they didn't have to be, they didn't have to be guided. They were just like, hey, this, this is what it has to look like in the end. And then you just let them, let them fix it. You just let them run it the way they're going to, because ten different people are going to do ten different things. And if the end result's the same, uh, I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> but the SEAL teams was a community like no other on the uh, on the face of the planet. Um, the the trust that we had in each other. Uh, that they were good. Everybody was going to do what they were supposed to do. 
and it had didn't have to be spoken. I mean, guys just knew. Um, when I when I got into a leadership position as a platoon chief, the guys used to tell me, "Hey, chief, get out of my back pocket." That's that's how I knew I was micromanaging because <laughs> they would tell me to get out of their back yeah, pocket. Yeah, right. Um, the SEAL team just runs itself. Right. Sorry about that. Drop I, down and get 10 foot to leave the damn cell phone on. No. <laughs> There's two. Air <laughs> <laughs> is like, what the hell are you All doing? Right, cool. All right. <laughs> Well, that's what that's what they should have known better than to put me and you on on screen together. Yeah, we don't know what the hell we're going to say, do we? At least Melanie's there to nope. keep track of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got another question. This is James from Hawaii. Okay. Given your war experiences and post-war challenges, if your son was contemplating following your footsteps, what advice would you give him? I would tell him to go do what he wanted to do. And I would help him. Because they're probably going to do that anyways. Well, I've got two daughters. And every time that I told them not to do something, uh, there, there seemed to be some retaliation. Um, I don't like oh, to be. Man, I got some daughter, daughter too. I don't like to be told what to do. Really? I, don't think, I don't think most people like to be told what to do. And I know you don't. <laughs> no. Hey, you can ask me to do something. I'll do it all day long. Yeah, I like the ask. That's why you, you when you hear from me, <laughs> I, I, I never had people that worked for me. They worked with me. Uh, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ask him to do something. Hey, could you get this for me? I had an officer that introduced us as his men once. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he said, these are my men. <laughs> That's a good one. We all laughed at him. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was from uh, R. Clark. Can you share some of your secrets for successfully transitioning to civilian life from the military? Um, well, I, I've had experiences that, that give me a mindset that, uh, I don't care what happens. I'm going to figure it out. Uh, I don't, I don't worry about things. I, I just know that if something needs to be fixed, the situation arises, I just know that I'm going to figure it out when it happens. I don't worry about that event happening. <laughs> I just try not to worry about anything. <laughs> it, it's worked pretty good so far. Yeah. And dwelling on stuff. Like in our community, we have a saying, the only easy day was yesterday. So like when our day comes down and then we go through it at the end of it, you lay down, you have no idea if tomorrow's coming. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's my point. This is my Clark shirt. And, and yesterday is gone. Yeah, yeah. So – Dwelling on something just brings that added stress into the next day. When in reality, all you're supposed to be focusing on is what you, what's, what's at hand and what's around you, what you can deal with, not what everybody else is trying to deal with. Well, human emotion is pretty uh, powerful. And uh, I think worry actually makes you manifest problems. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you worry about it, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Another question. You ready? Yep. This is from Master Sergeant Keith, and he just wants to know how you're holding up now. Better than ever. That's an easy question. I'm good. <laughs> All right. This is from Adam from Wisconsin. How do we teach our nation to toughen up and stop being offended by everyone's opinions? Well, that's a good one because that's a uh... – as humans, you have to actually understand what your wants and needs are before you can do anything. I, I mean, this, this is something I've, I'm discovered in, discovering in the last five years, what my wants and needs are. 
And then I give the people in my life the, uh, I tell them, this is what I want and this is what I need. And if you can't, you can't provide it, then you just won't be with me. Um, everybody in society right now is trying to be somebody else. Are so worried about what somebody else has. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, the Kardashians are famous. For what? For nothing. Um, people envy them. And I think envy kind of drives a lot of the stuff that's going on now. I mean, we're such a narcissistic society right now. Everybody's so concerned about what other people think. Um, I mean, it's, it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I can almost say I really don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I got like from zero to 40, you have an opinion. And everybody has one. And it's only facilitated by other people who, who are educating you on what, you, the, what you're going through. After you hit 40, then you get some perspective. 40 to 60 is your perspective after that wisdom drops in. But in the beginning, you just have an opinion. And, and people getting offended by other people's opinions, well, that's just kind of conversation. That's why you're supposed to talk it out. Getting mad and, and just walking away, man, it's, that, that doesn't solve anything. And don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, I think we got we got to do it better. Because um, as soon as you poke me in the chest and call me a name, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. Uh, Dan Crenshaw, I love watching that guy because he he's good, right? He doesn't get mad. Well, he does, but he hides it. <laughs> right, right, right. Every once, while, every once in a while, you can see in his one eye, he gets a little angry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that one eye patch starts moving. I'm like, I think you might be getting mad. <laughs> Dude, I saw him on, uh, God, what was that? He was on, um, uh, <laughs> it was such a brutal interview. And I actually saw him get, get a little angry in that eye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, he knew he was going to right. with you to try to be somebody to try to make him look silly. And he did so. Yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, he does well. I'm, well, we're super proud of him, man. I'm congressman. All right. This is from Ann from, uh, from PA. I'm a therapist treating veterans. What is the most important thing I can say to them? What do they teach you're us? You're asking us that. You're in trouble. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Cool. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. You're already a therapist? I've already, I think I've already answered that. Question. I think if, if, if people discover what their wants and needs are, and they don't care what other people think, I, I think that's kind of, oh, and, and relax. It's kind of the secret to everything. Breathe. <laughs> You know, just on, on a side note, bro, just between me and you, I, ever since this quarantine started, we've been out at the ranch, and, and, and literally every, every day the lesson that I've learned, and I hear it from my kids and my wife and from people coming out, like, hey, learn to relax. Like, we, we, don't, we don't know how to do that because we do like 10, 15 things in a day, and the, even in the middle of doing something, I'm, we're thinking about the next thing we're going to have to be doing so we can get through it. Yeah. And it took me forever to learn how to relax. Well, you're still kind of young. You'll figure it out. <laughs> How old are you, Marcus? Love you, man. <laughs> I'm uh, 44. Oh, I'm not much older than you. I'm only 49. I'm 49. Man, you're old man, you're about to be an OG, dude. You hit that 50. <laughs> Half a century. That's it. All right, this is from Jason from New Jersey. You ready? That's where I was born, Point Pleasant. Uh, you guys are family. What's the one freedom you want every American to celebrate? I can't just say one. <laughs> we have a lot of freedoms that are given to us. Uh, well, Jason from New Jersey, where you grew up, just wants to know about one of them. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Oh, let's 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 just say I mean, it's damn hard. Let's just let's just say if you follow the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, 
and our other governor, uh, governing documents of this country, uh, I would put them all as one. Um, Be because I'm not going to give any of them away. All right, ready? this is from WT from Virginia. How do you feel about all the people that disrespect our flag and country when you fought so hard for it? It's their, it's their right. I'm not going to take it away from them. At least I know who they are. <laughs> uh, right. If they, if they're burning the flag, I know who they are. Yep. It really doesn't right. bother me that much. Just like I, I mean, I, I saw a post about a, uh, you know, all these, all these statues that are being taken down and they're putting up these, uh, in different cities right now, they're putting up, uh, these huge statues to, to Satan. Uh, they're, they got huge statues right now of, of Satan in multiple cities. And, uh, People are saying, well, we should tear that down too. And I'm like, nah, we should leave it there because at least we know the people that that are, we know what they think. We we get to see what they are. And yeah. if that statue wasn't there, we wouldn't be able to see it. Right. And it's it's their right. Well, and it's, it's a no shit religion, <laughs> which is crazy. But I mean, that's what we're our, that's what we are in right now. We're in a fight over good over evil. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty, pretty obvious. Blatantly obvious. <laughs> yeah, I, All right. and a lot of a lot of people don't even see it. No. All right, Jim from Arkansas. What's your what was your focus and inspiration to pull you through therapy? I'm still going through therapy. I'm working on my continuum of care. That's what life is. Life is therapy. That's yeah. why I come down here. It's no easy button. Here. Right? Hey, little girl. She's part of my therapy. Oh, absolutely. I'd go get mine, but he's passed out on the rug in the house. He doesn't <laughs> move anymore. No, oh, I still got a puppy. She's only 15 months old. Oh. Where'd you get her? I got her from a, a place uh, named Baden Canine in Canada. I got her in December. Uh, She's Canadian. She is. She's not doing really well with the heat out here. <laughs> yeah, well. All right. This is from Adam from Wisconsin. How do we teach our nation to... Wait, no. Come on. Excuse me. Hmm. This is from RGI. How long did it take for the adrenaline to wear down before you realized how bad you were injured when we were out there? I, I, that's a good question. I think I've asked you that before. I was like, man, when did it all settle in like that, that, that you were in that spot? Well, uh, I got left in the house. It was, it was, yeah. wasn't even an accident. Um, nobody saw me go into the room and I was knocked out by a grenade blast. <clears throat> so they, uh, the, the, the volume of fire coming out of that room was so high, they decided to just pull out. And uh, so I, I went through the whole thing. <laughs> you know, well, I might as well just tell the war story. So I entered this room, and I immediately get my rifle shot out of my hand, and I transition to my pistol, and I kill the guy down the left wall. And as I'm falling forward and landing next to him, everything is, is very slow motion, matrix, uh, frame by frame, conversations with myself, I'm watching bullets. I'm watching the spin. I'm watching the vapor trails come off of bullets. I'm watching where they're impacting. And this is something that's happened to me multiple times. You had, yeah, you've had that gift before, though, right? That's happened to you. I've heard you say that before. Like that's something that you have. Like you can yeah. slow down time when you're getting into a pinch. I. It's happened to me ever since I was a kid. Um, I don't. I can't do it on purpose. Only in times of extreme extreme stress <laughs> like when I'm getting really getting ready to get really hurt it's happened when I've fallen out of trees because a branch broke when I was a kid or I took a jump out of a tree too high into into the creek uh, when I was on the Navy parachute team I had multiple cutaways and wraps uh, where it happened 
and uh, you know, multiple times in the SEAL teams where uh, I fell off an oil rig once because I had a uh, a steel hook, a uh, grappling hook, uh, the weld broke. Um, yeah, I'm the reason why we have solid titanium formed grappling hooks because we used grappling to hook and, one, the... and the damn thing ripped and I fell 50 foot, I fell 50 foot out of a, um, out of an oil platform on a climb and hit the water. Uh, and when you hit the water flat on your back with body armor on, <laughs> It, it really knocks the it knocks the crap out of you. But that that fall, fifty foot, probably took. It felt like a minute. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing, always, man. Kind of always happen. But you know, there's baseball players that that say they can. It's really hard to hit a ninety five mile an hour fastball. Very few people can do it. And some of the guys that can do it, I mean, you got to make that decision as soon as that ball comes out of that guy's hand. And they say they can see that ball spin and they can count the threads on the ball. I need to figure out that. <laughs> right? That's not, very, that's not very stressful. It's like they're doing it on purpose. Human condition, man. All right. This is from James. Do you miss the Navy? Yeah, but it's not hard to go back and see it. <laughs> There's... There's events. You see that boat on fire in the harbor of San Diego? Yeah, I wonder what that what happened there. That's what I was wondering. What was that? An aircraft carrier? That's what I thought at the beginning, but it wasn't. It looked like one, but it wasn't. It was. Um, I didn't even recognize the name of it. I don't. Like something. I don't remember I a U.S. Navy ship catching on fire since the Forrestal. Forrestal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was that was a mess. They they had so much stuff on fire. They were they were jettisoning jettisoning aircraft yeah. off the that off the side they got of the shield. That 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 forest all, That's a crazy story, man. Yeah. Can you imagine being on the middle of that thing in 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 the middle of the ocean on fire? Oh, I know, right? On fire. When when metal starts when metal starts burning, <laughs> you know it's hot. <laughs> oh man. And whaling. The, the creepiest sound is when metal starts to, to, to bend and whine and, and moan. Morgan said when he got in that helicopter crash, he's like, bro, you could hear that, that, that metal start to moan. That's, that's when you know something's going on. I bet you everything slowed down for them, too. That's, oh. a, that's amazing. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that, that your brother was in that helicopter crash, but there was, what, seven SEALs, eight SEALs on there? Yeah, yeah. And it was, two. It was, it was gnarly. Two of them were on a rope when that yeah. held up. And no, I don't think too many people know that story outside the community. They all made it. Uh, I was assigned to all those guys when I worked at SOCOM. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I mean, the, it's amazing. I mean, the, there was a crew chief that died. So, so yeah. people know yeah, the yeah, story. The they were they were fast roping onto a ship, and the and the helicopter rotor struck the superstructure and it crashed into the ship and there was two guys sliding down a rope at the time and uh marcus's brother was on the helicopter well i'm breaking hipaa he broke his back but he wound up staying in the military and getting a commission after that ah. now, now he's some kind of brain surgeon isn't he yeah 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 he broke his coccyx coccyx <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's out at the dunes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like getting the wind knocked out of you and, and breaking your, your, your butt bone at the same time. Oh, God. Because when they landed, you know, everyone was sitting down, kind of so they shuffled back. It was, dude, it was gnarly. All right. Hey, what was your favorite part about being a steel? Uh, that it wasn't the same all the time, that we got to do so many different things. I, like I said, I get bored easy, so I, I can only do CQC for like a month, and I'm like, man, let's go do something else. <laughs> uh, you got to so hand it to whoever lined out our pipeline, especially in the training. I know it, the curriculum changes as the guys get older and take over, but it's really like that because just about the time we start to get bored or, or everyone's kind of like, ah, they'll shift us into something else. Usually what we don't want to do, so we'll be happy to go back into that, that realm, but it's so dynamic that – 
when people ask what a normal day for us is, like, well, I don't have one. We don't have a normal day. That's, I think that's one of the hardest things we get out is trying to find a normal day. Because when we try to find a normal day in the civilian world, it's so fast, most people can't keep up. And we gotta, we gotta learn to throttle back. And, and uh, that was tough for me, I remember. Well, we don't, we don't get to talk to other people like we talk to each other either. <laughs> You don't. You can't have thin, right. can't have thin skin in the community. Oh no, 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 no. That's that's one of like the first tests that you're going through, man. If you don't have that 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 armor thrown on you in the beginning, you ain't gonna make it. Well, right. it's a very very. All right, self last question, brother. What is the best very, leadership? Very self-regulating community. It self-regulates. Yes. <laughs> that's a good way of saying that. I hadn't heard that. That's a good way of saying it. All right, last question. What is the best leadership quote you can think of? I'm a captain for a fire rescue in my country, and I'm always trying to lift the boys up. Counties. Counties, excuse me. Let me do that one again. All right, what is one of the best leadership quotes that you, that you, uh, that you use or that you've heard of? This question comes from a captain at a, at a fire and rescue. It's out of Georgia. Out of Georgia. And he's always trying to lift his boys up. Yeah, that's that, that's what I did. I, I think the reason why I was respected in the community uh, was that people saw that I was trying to take care of them. Um, I, I tried to understand what other people's needs were, and I tried to make sure that they had the what they needed to do their job. And uh, I would say that the people that I see, I see you know, even in our community, uh, that are not good leaders, are people that aren't trusted and they don't know that they're not trusted. Um, I never asked anybody to do anything that I didn't do first. And I always took the greatest risk um, first. Yeah. So. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you can't be a good leader if people don't trust you. You don't, you don't have to be the smartest person. I think that's probably the thing I'm the best at is uh, I'm really not the best at anything, but I think my best personal skill is I know how to take a group of people and build a team and make sure that the team works. Uh, when I was a platoon chief, I had guys that had more combat experience than me and I knew it. And I conceded to, I conceded to what I know I didn't know. If I didn't know it, I, I'd go, I'd, I'd go to somebody that was junior to me that had more combat experience. Um, I can't say their names, but my job as a platoon chief was so easy be, uh, because of two E6s. I didn't even really have a job. The yeah. guys were so, the guys respected those two E6s so much and were so terrified of them <laughs> that if they didn't do their job, I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I would say those those two guys are probably the two best seals I ever met. Like I said, I can't say their names because they're still active duty. No. But, but it, it's funny seeing them as master chiefs. <laughs> I know, man. I there are guys in our community, man. When you hear their names, and it doesn't happen to a lot of guys. I'm not even one of them. But you hear their names, man. That dude is just so rock solid that people come out of retirement just to work with that guy. I mean, it's just. Yeah. And it makes everything around you so easy. And you can tell those are the guys who really assimilated into what they were doing. And um, you need those guys in our community. And then you need the guys who are on the, the edge walkers, like the ones that, are, that they're, they're holding the leash on, man. They're trying to pull back. That's what makes us so proficient. And it was, it was the greatest life, man. I, 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 hey, I was honored to share that time with you overseas and be in the community with you, man. I know you went through some of the worst stuff, but I applaud you, man, for getting through that, for getting out, recovering and writing this book. I'm recommending it to everybody, man. It's the, it's the wildest story. Hey, man, I'm, I'm glad you made it. I truly am. Me too. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> I, I'm not complimenting your ass again for another, I don't know, at least a year. That's okay. Yeah, it's funny, though. <laughs> a lot of the good leaders in the SEAL team, uh, NCOs anyway um, they have reputations of being assholes but people trust them because they're fair yeah they take care of people but they're assholes I mean that's the reputation I had um, 
but, but people knew I took care of them and they trusted me. And you can't be a good leader if, if you're not competent. You have to first be competent. You have to prove it <laughs> that you're competent. Um, yeah. and, the, and they have to trust you or, or nobody's, nobody's going to follow. Um, and it's funny you say that uh, we hold the leashes on guys. We always told them, uh, don't, don't make me push you. Make me tell you that I need to pull you back. Um, yeah. That's what I always heard. Yeah, don't, don't make me push you. When the trust thing falls in, you know, when you have that with the leadership, it, it's not, they're not following you anymore. They're, they're right beside you. They're in front of you. They're, they're, they're ready to go. And, and that's how you know, man. And it's a comfort level and it, it builds that confidence that makes what we, what we do, man. And uh, you're spot on on that one. I left a job uh, about 10 months ago now because, uh, well, after I got into the Navy, I worked for the SOCOM Care Coalition for seven years as a wounded warrior advocate. Then I went back to teach in military free fall, had an injury there. Rip my pec off my arm. I couldn't jump anymore. Um, and then I went to CQC in Salk, which was pretty cool because tactics were changed because of what happened to me. It was really cool to be able to go teach it. And uh, CQC in Salk and the SEAL teams is probably one of the biggest challenges for new leaders. You know, guys, guys that were shooters their whole time, they become platoon chiefs. And then you got officers that become task unit commanders. And then you got to figure out how to manage 36 guys in, in very stressful situations. And uh, sometimes uh, people in leadership uh, decide that they don't have to actually go do the training. They, they already think they're, they're, they already know it all. And, and that they don't have to um, – demonstrate their abilities also. And that, that's, that's something that, that's a failed leadership. You always have to prove that you're competent. You never get to stand on your laurels. And that's something we learned in the SEAL teams. Just because you did something yeah. really cool, uh, I mean, what, what is that saying? Uh, ten, ten, data, 10 data boys, 10 data boys yeah, yeah. ruined by one fuck up. Yeah. And that's what you'll get remembered for. Make one mistake. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable in our community that we do that to ourselves. But, you're, I mean, you're right. And in that leadership role, it's not when they try to clip out a training. It's like, hey, the training's really not just for you. It's for you to learn how to, to work with the new guys. And for them and, to see and get that. that and, for, and for them to see that you're competent. Yeah. Yeah. Because if yeah, I can't absolutely. see that you're competent, I'm not going to listen to you. Right. No, that's solid advice, man. Thank you. Well, I thank you guys for having me on. Here's he. Oh, it's been a blast, man. We've been out here. I, every time I get a chance to, to rev with a team guy, man, it just get, re recharges the battery. I miss you guys more than you'll even know, man. Well, so, I think good I'm, luck. I know you're to hit the road. Yeah, I'm going to be out there. Uh, we'll, oh, good. Yeah, we'll bring you – we'll uh, let's try and link up. We'll shoot out all the uh, the dates for your – your tour and your book tour and everything like that. And we'll, we're going to promote the, the, the hell of that for you, man. Cause it's, it's something I, I, I people need It's like, I don't think people need to hear the story. They do need to hear it. And I, it, it, in our community, some of those crazy gun fights that come out of there, are just, just, well, just make history. Yours was absolutely one of them. I can't believe you went through that, bro. I can't believe you're sitting here, man. That's the craziest stuff. Well, I Good think, job, man. I think, I think God loves me. I don't think so. I, I think that maybe he's got a great no, – <laughs> hell yeah, he loves you, man. He's got a great sense of humor. That's why he keeps putting us through all this stuff. And oh, you just God. keep smiling, man. Never lose that – never lose that driver, that push you got. I know it's tough sometimes. And when you go on the road, book tour, man, that's, that's a different world. It's like being on deployment by yourself. But remember, everybody there, man, just embrace everybody who shows up because it's, it's really a way to change – Change everything. Changes that your one. life, man. The Amer our American people, man, that's our America's grace, amazing grace. So enjoy their company. I will. I'm looking forward to it. What up? Well, I guess we could take everybody on a little tour. Ship the armor. I got this computer. Oh, you thing. got it? Oh, yeah.
I can de oh, yeah, detach the uh yeah, I, I got this I crazy computer so that's the body armor yeah yeah this is the uh this is the front plate front plate this is all the bullets yep. they drug out of it um Dude, that is a badass shadow box. I, Mojo, when I walked into the Commodore's office, he had your body armor sitting in there by his desk when it was still all, uh, the, all the fiberglass and everything. And I remember we didn't even know what it was. Was that Bam Bam? No, uh, it was. Uh, hold on. Oh. We got to promote the Premier uh, Collectibles link. How yeah, I'm fixing to do that. I'm sorry, that's what we were looking over right now. So yes, I'm. I've, I've been signing all these book placards. Um, I'm going to come up with a way to do personalized things here in the near future, um, but. I've got all these placards for people that want to buy books with, with signatures and somehow the publisher is going to work that out. I'm not quite sure how that's working right now, but um, yeah. So to close it out, man, everybody wants to know how they can get the book. They can obviously buy it offline and they can also go to this uh, premier collectibles link. Yeah. They can go to premier collectibles uh, to get uh, an autographed copy. And that's going to be on, on these, on these placards. Um, here in the near future, I'm going to have a shop page on my own website at perfectlywounded.com where people could also go to, to buy the book. Uh, I've got a link to Amazon on there and I'm, I'm going to have a shop page on there for people that want to buy personalized books, uh, personalized autograph books, uh, here probably, hopefully by the end of the week, uh, been getting a lot of, um, requests for autograph books. And I know this is different than a personalized one. Um, but I'm working on it. This is the first time I've sold a book. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, well, there's some of us out here, bro, that had plenty of training in that. And I, I mean, you know, you need anything, you just holler at me. But this is this is kind of how it works. It's it's slow, as smooth, smooth as fast. I mean, the, the, all those requests are going to come pouring in, man. So, uh, congratulations. I wish nothing but the best for you and the success of your book and 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 your continued success, man. You're a warrior through and through, and uh, it was just an honor to serve with you. Truly. Appreciate it, Marcus. Thank nice you for to everything. Be nice